everybody, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. I have called this meeting here today to tell you about this frightful assassin of our youth. This assassin poisons the mind through propaganda and false accusations about a certain drug that one Simon D. Chipmunk once quoted as marijuana. This propaganda is a film that was made in the 30s and is so fabricated that I swear even the actors themselves are puppets. It is a film that can affect your children, or yours, or yours, or yours. Will you stop talking while I'm talking? Jesus, the attention span of jelly beans! This propaganda is a film simply known as... Reefer Madness. <laughs> Yes, folks, it's time to take a look at a cult classic, Reefer Madness, an anti-drug film that's so anti-drugs that you'd swear they were just making this stuff up. Which, of course, they are. The film so misses the mark about the side effects of marijuana that even after school specials are pointing and laughing at them. It's a film everybody loves to mock, and we're going to look at it today. So let's not miss out on the highlight. Let's dive right into Reefer Madness. So after it starts out by saying the story is fictional, yeah, because we really needed that warning, the film gives us a brief forward about the tale we're about to see. No, not Startle! Wow, for a drug so menacing, they sure do give it a nice font. I wish a narrator was reading this when he got to that part, he'd probably say it all fancy will not have failed in its purpose, because the dread marijuana may be reaching forth next for your son or daughter. Uh, let's see, uh, laughing, hallucination, God, I want a joint. Uh, let's see, uh, God. Yikes! I thought most people just ate Cheetos and watched Spongebob. you just read us the damn movie? Hell, the phone book is sounding more entertaining than this. Uh, let's see, if we wipe out this ghastly menace, then the picture will not have failed in its purpose. If its purpose was to bore the living shit out of us, I agree. We then watch a bunch of newspapers as they display the horrors of the evil drug. Police wage war on narcotic. Dope peddlers caught in high school. Federal eight. Oh, oh, okay. Police raid marijuana flat. This leads us to the widest of gatherings at the School Parents Association. Dr. Alfred Buzzkill here tells us just how high his high school has actually gotten. It exists in almost every city and hamlet in the country. It might be interesting and important for you to know some of the methods used in bringing these drugs into the country. Uh, sure, go ahead. They are hidden in fake jewelry cases, in the heels of shoes, women's shoes especially because the drugs can be secreted in false heels. A woman's shoe? That's a great idea! Hollow shaving brushes are another medium. Books with false centers are often used. Watch cases... Slow down! Slow down! This is all gold! Places. Recently, a huge supply of heroin was taken. It was concealed in an apparently harmless shipment of 35 barrels of olive oil. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a pipe bomb, just so you never figure out how to do it! And more deadly, even than these soul-destroying drugs, is the menace of marijuana. Well, that's just common knowledge. No doubt many of you do not believe that these things do happen, that they cannot happen to you. You may also believe that the facts have been exaggerated. By you? Never! Let me tell you of something that happened right here in our own city. So as you imagine, he goes into the backstory of what caused this thrilling meeting to happen in the first place. Apparently there were these gangsters, see? Who spent most of their time selling marijuana to teenagers and providing a place for them to smoke it. The woman who runs the apartment is named May, who's going out with one of the gangsters. Oh, Jack, we can get along without dragging those young kids up here. Oh, why don't you button up your lip? Uh, what's the good doctor while telling the story going into great detail about May putting on her pantyhose? Cause I'd be pretty freaked out if he was. Then she slipped on the other pantyhose. Slowly and elegantly, she touched her leg, reminding herself of the days when she was a bad, bad girl. Oh, yes, she liked those days a lot, didn't she? 
We then get a quick shot of her bra strap and... Dr. Alfred! Okay, okay. A couple of your customers, May. Yeah? They're old enough to know what they're doing. Not like those young kids you bring up here. All right, all right. Listen, I'm gonna blow. Too easy. So he goes to where all the hip cats are hanging and tries to see if he can sell them the evil weed. Oh, by the way, Ralph, I'm sort of getting a little party Saturday afternoon over at my grandmother's. Nothing but party animals in this town. Hello, Mary. How are you, Bill? How are you, Ralph? Oh, hello, Ralph. You know my brother Jimmy, don't you? How are you? Swell. Swell. Imagine, somebody swell in the 30s. In fact, everybody seems to be swell in this movie. Just take a look. Swell. 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 What the heck? Let's just have a swell -a meter at the bottom of the screen to keep track of how swell things are. So they convince one of the kids to come with him to a place called Joe's, where they hope to get him addicted to the stuff. What the hell? Ah. You know, they really don't use that many butt transitions anymore, do they? It's a dying art. Good night, Mary Jane, wherever you are. Ha cha 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 cha. Don't you know he isn't that hot finger curly? Boy, he really swings out hot with a message jive. The hell do they just say? You wanna dance? Do I? <laughs> I love this guy. He looks like the missing Dick Tracy character. Pot top. So after we see him smoke a joint in the closet, not really sure why we're seeing this, we see two kids named Bill and Mary Lane sit down at her mother's. You know, after that session we had yesterday, I went home and told Mother that the trouble with her pot roast gravy was she hadn't added three heaping teaspoonfuls of olive oil. <laughs> Boy, these two need some pot and fast. She just threw me out of the kitchen. <laughs> well, I don't wonder. Hello, children. Hello, Mother. Hello, Mrs. Lane. Gosh, hot chocolate. Gosh, hot chocolate. Now then, enjoy yourself. He will. She will too, Mrs. Lane. May I? Oh, thank you, kind sir. You're so very, very kind. <laughs> Holy smokes, the swell meter is just bursting with swellness. Anymore, this place is going to make Pleasantville look like the fucking ghetto. Like softest music to attending ears. Romeo. My dear. What o'clock tomorrow shall I send to thee? By the hour of nine. I will not fail. Oh, take her bra off! <laughs> Well, uh, I'll see you tonight, Mary. Oh, my God. Gotcha. Oh! <laughs> Who is a grotto? So the next day, Billy meets up with Jimmy as they compare whose day was more swell. I take you any place? Well, I wasn't going any place in particular. Well, then, how about driving me over to the show's place with me? I'll buy you a soda. I never drink that stuff. Really? Soda's too strong for you, kid? You know, how about air? Can you breathe air? Or are you afraid that there's a chance a water particle might slip in? Cause, you know, water's pretty heavy too. Hello, Lance. Hello, Ralph. How are you? Hello, Lance. How have you been, Ralph? Hello, Two sodas. No, I mean one soda and one root beer. <laughs> They're both sodas! Good God, if this is the sober life, I hate to see what these morons are like if they do take something! Why, well, sure, a lot of the kids will be there. It's keen. Well, I don't know. I really shouldn't have. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm out there, Jerry, and I'm loving every minute of it! So Jimmy and Billy get convinced to go back to the apartment and puff the magic dragon again. Wait a minute! Hold it! Stop the movie! Rao puke? Something must be brought to the attention of this travesty. Let me guess, you have something to say. When do I not have something to say? Alright, well, what do you gotta talk about? It may come to an astonishing revelation to all of you that I, in fact, have done drugs in the past. No. Oh, yes. You may be shocked to find that I was not always a straight arrow. Your arrow's as straight as a hedge maze. But needless to say, I must point out this is not how high people act. You will notice the constant movement emulating from their feet. Notice the incredible amount of energy that they have in their step. This is not a common occurrence. The typical stoner looks more like this. Quiet, immovable, and astonished that he has two hands. You will also notice the absurd amount of smoke that these kids are taking in. And yet, not once do they ever let out a smoker's cough. Even people that work in a tobacco factory let out a cough every once in a while. These teens are smoking Kool-Aid. And why not? They get drunk off of soda, apparently. 
Well, thank you. That was very informative. Are you done? Oh, I'll never be done. But I will stop. For now. Okay, so after they get- You got O.J. Simpson off the hook! And you caused 9-11! Okay, so after the teens get higher than Zeus, one of the gangsters lets out this really crazy laugh. <laughs> now that's a side effect I believe, laughing at a totally unfunny moment. But if that was the case, everybody in this movie would be friggin' high. So one of the gangsters approaches the crime boss and lets him know how business is going. That's 10 gross for Jack Perry. Who? Pete Diddy. All right, send him in. Pete Diddy? I thought you move on to the harder stuff by now. I'm just dope enough to draw the line, selling hop to kids. All right, Pete. You know what my policy's always been. By the way, am I the only one who thinks their crime lord looks like Dr. Cox from Scrubs? I only wish you had a couple of kids. The boys are not satisfied. I'm always glad to have them retire. I'll tell you what, Barbie. If you can get the kids to just give us their money, I won't have an emotional scene to show I'm not such a tough guy. <laughs> Brent Fraser was dead all along. So Billy, or Jimmy, or one of the boys ending with E, drives the car too fast, of course, because of the marijuana, and runs an old man over. Oh, come on! He didn't even touch him! What, does he just throw himself in front of cars just to collect the insurance? Help! I have no scars, no broken bones, and not a scratch on me, but I'll sue that bastard for all he's got! There is no doubt. Oh, wait a minute, now the doctor's putting himself in the story? Come on, man, you're just an ego boner. But do you realize that marijuana is not like other forms of dope? And frankly, the only sure cure is a widespread campaign in education. Oh, it's all right to talk about education, Mr. Wyatt. But we educators can't do anything until the public is sufficiently aroused. I've got some playboys in the back. We can call it pot porn. So they talk about the drug some more, and of course, the terrible consequences it has on humanity. Here is a most tragic case. Yes, I remember. Just a young boy. Under the influence of the drug, he killed his entire family with an axe. Jesus, killed his family with an axe? Come on, marijuana is like the Woody Allen of drugs. Pointless, ineffectual, and maybe annoying if overexposed to it. I'd like to take these records, if I may. I feel they would be of invaluable assistance to me in combating the evil in my school. You're very welcome, Dr. Carroll. Thank you. Sit down, Bill. Oh, God, are we still with this guy? Come on, the crowd he's talking to must be bored out of their minds. So I talked to the man and didn't learn very much. Then I talked to the boy and didn't learn very much. Then I went home and made myself a cake. Oh, it was a lovely cake with lots of frosting and a little cherry on top. Then I started to fantasize about a woman putting on her pantyhose. Oh, yes, the soft, elegant leg that she has was so... <laughs> Wish I didn't have to bring that to every meeting. You were always a fine student. You always had excellent grades. If you were being honest with me and honest with yourself, I'm afraid you'd tell me an entirely different story. <laughs> I'm worried about something at home. So the doctor tries to see if there's anything wrong with the kid, but doesn't get anything out of him. Well, that was boring. Let's get high again. <laughs> what the hell is up with his face? Come on! Uh, come on! Yeah. <laughs> Mary Lane then finds the place and tries looking for Billy. The gangster convinces her to take a few puffs, and before you know it, she's seen colors in a black and white movie. <laughs> The gangster tries to take advantage of Mary Lane as Billy walks in and misinterprets what he sees. What o'clock tomorrow shall I send to thee? It's sweet of you to help me, Bill. And how fucking dare anyone out there make fun of Brittany? I did not have sexual relations with her. Oh my god, this is the greatest movie I've ever seen in my life! Has kids, has a wife, and has a husband because they raping anybody out here. <laughs> This, of course, causes him to go on a rampage and fight pretty well for a guy stoned off his ass. But then somebody whips out a gun. Oh, 
Oh no, the gunshot popped her zit! She's dead. How? By shooting the mosquito on her back? So in typical gangsta fashion, see? They give the kid the gun and in his stone state convince him that he shot her. What happened? You killed her. That's right. You killed Mary Lane while on the Mary Jane. <laughs> Look. After I scram, you call the cops. And this is your story. Uh, I can still hear you. Two kids came up here for a couple of beers. What? You're out in the kitchen, you heard, heard the shots. When you got in here, that's what you found. Just stick to that story. Oh, I won't she! Isn't that what happened? I, oh, I'm so high I don't care! Oh. So they have a trial for Billy and oh my god! How many times do you put yourself in your own story? You're the Orson Welles slash Kenneth Brown of douchey drug films! Six months ago, what would have been your opinion regarding the character of my client? He was a fine, upstanding American boy. A good scholar. A good athlete. Slugworth's chocolates could have used him to build an everlasting pot stopper. So in the jury room, 12 angry idiots sit around and try to make their vote. But he might have been insane when no. he did it. No, he wasn't. He knew what he was doing. But supposing he was insane. You can never make me believe it, nor anybody else. We'll uh, take a first vote. Boy, nice impartial verdict. Do I have an opinion? No, you don't! 11 for conviction, 1 for acquittal. I'm looking at you, Baldy. But there's a reasonable doubt about the boy's sanity. He admitted it himself. That wasn't the first time he was there. What the hell? Eh, I shouldn't have smoked all that pot. We gotta make an example. Before boys like that contaminate all of our children. We can't have every murderer hiding behind the gag that he's insane. Sure, they see red before they kill somebody. But whose fault is it? Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! So Billy gets the verdict of guilty, but one gangster can't help but feel guilty himself. But hey, a little pot will solve that problem. Laughter. Laughter. Play faster. Play faster. Travel back in time! 1.21 gigawatts! Just then, another gangster comes in to see him in his drug induced state. I know what you want. You want to kill me. You're crazy. <laughs> Word of advice you never want to call a crazy guy crazy. You know, because they're fucking crazy! So the gangster goes nuts and attacks him with a fly swatter while one of the other people in the building calls the police. Going on. Yes, yes. Apartment 32. Wait a minute, how could anybody get a word in during that? What was she talking to herself? Hello? Hurry, hurry. There's a terrible fight going on. What? Yes, yes. I didn't say Apartment anything. Apartment 32. The hell? <laughs> so Elliot Ness and his untouchables are sent out to arrest the people involved, and eventually the drug bust is closed. They even get the woman to confess all the crimes they've committed, including the framing of Billy for murder. Bill didn't know he hadn't killed Mary. He was so doped up, they made him think he had. Ralph wanted to tell you, too. Oh, if they'd only let him. But this is the truth, Jack. I'm telling you the truth. After Jack saw the burning was dead, I just as much to blame. I am. I am. Officer Dick Cheney believes her story and sets out to put things right. But after she makes the confession, she finds that life just ain't worth living anymore. And by God, it does look like nice jumping weather, doesn't it? Okay, how did she break that window? That hole was huge! It's not like TV, guys. Those things don't crack that easily. So Billy is let off the hook and the gangster is set to jail. Still stoned off his ass, apparently. I guess the guard was nice enough to let him smoke a few before he went into court. It is recommended, Your Honor, that the defendant be placed at an institution for the criminally insane for the rest of his natural life. I see no reason why the request should not be granted. This, of course, ends our story as our doctor friend tells us the final message that we're supposed to take home from all of this. Because it is only through knowledge that we can safely protect them. Failing this, the next tragedy 
may be that of your daughter, or your son, or yours, or yours, or yours. Tell your children the truth about marijuana. It's less dangerous than alcohol, but it's still somehow illegal. It's never harmed a soul in history except for the people we just made up. We give it to the sick and elderly, but that's only because they're going to die anyway. Or yours! Wait a minute! I got one last thing that I want to say! <sighs> what is it, puke? Have you ever considered the possibility of who's actually stoned in this movie? What do you mean? Well, think about it. You have a group of people who are clearly over-paranoid. They do nothing but sit in a room and stare at one person for hours. Then they tell over-exaggerated stories that, in fact, never happened. Oh, so what you're saying is... These hypocrites are stoned off their asses! The only reason they're watching him is because they believe his head is a giant molten milk ball! And the only reason he's with them is because he's paranoid of what'll happen if he stops talking! Okay, Puke, you've made your point. Put that in your pipe and smoke it! Because we already know what's really in there! All right, Puke, settle down. Cookies! Cookies! Why'd you say that? I don't know, I'm stoned. All right, well, despite this being painfully false and of course hokey as hell, this is a fine little bit of propaganda. There's a reason this became a cult classic. It's so misinformed about what it's trying to inform you about that the hilarity speaks for itself. And while nobody should think that drugs are one of the greatest things in the world, it's so fun to see just how extreme some people will go to convince us that even the most harmless of drugs are the worst things in the world. It's a lot of fun and you can see it almost everywhere, even on DVD. So if you get a chance, check it out. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember- WAIT! I HAVE SOMETHING IMPORTANT TO SAY! What? What the hell could you have to say? I just want to say that this film really affected me, and as of today, I am going to quit marijuana cold turkey! Really? Yes. I never knew what a horrible effect it was having on me all these years! Wow. Yeah, okay, well, I guess some good can come out of this movie, even if it is incredibly misleading. That's right. It's just good old-fashioned crack for me! Okay, I knew there was a catch. I, that's lovely. Okay, I remember it so you don't have to. Why is your head a melting milk bone? Shut up! Gosh, hot chocolate.